Hello all. In this podcast, we're going to discuss how do scientists measure ionization energy, okay? So how do they determine that value? Well, the answer, as you already knew, was photoelectron spectroscopy, or PES. Um, they can interpret this data, and they can determine information about the structure of the atom. Um, this data provides evidence for the shell model of the atom. PES works, um, basically all light consists of photons which all have a specific energy. Okay, so if we shoot a photon of light, so here you see the photon of light being shot at the uh, atom, we can cause one, the outermost electron, the least tightly held electron, to be ejected from the nucleus, okay? And we can measure the energy with which it hits a plate. Okay, so it's very similar to the photoelectric effect. All right, here's another depiction. Okay, so you shoot the light at it, it comes off, you measure the energy here, you know the energy that was put in, and you can subtract to determine the energy needed to remove that electron. All right, now these energies that we get, they, they tell us specific things about the atom. Specifically, they provide evidence of the shell model probably not the most interesting thing to you. You probably want to know more about how do I read these spectra. Well, let me tell you. The intensity or the size of each of these peaks tells us relatively how many electrons are in that particular energy level or that shell. Okay, so here we can see lithium, two electrons in this peak, which is twice as big as this peak that has only one electron. Okay, so if there were um, four, say four electrons on another shell, you would expect to see it twice as big as this one, and then four times as big as this very small one over here. Okay, all right, that doesn't tell us the full picture. To understand the full picture, we really need to um, look and see what each of these things tell us. Okay, well, we know that the very tightly, most tightly held electrons are going to be the ones closest to the nucleus. And those are going to be particularly our 1s's, right? So we know that right here in this peak, that's a 1s2. After 1s2, we know that the next peak is a 2s2. Now, confirmation is both of these are the same size. They both have two electrons, so we're doing good so far. All right, next comes the p6. Okay, so we have a full 2p6, then we go to 3s2, 3p6, now after 3p6 it goes to 4s, right? Now how do we know if this is 4s1 or 4s2? You look at the size of the peak. Based on the size of this peak, we can tell that it is half the size of this one beside it that has 2, so that means it has to be a 4s1. Okay, so what element is this? If you guessed potassium, you were right. Go you! All right, let's look at this next spectra over here. All right, this next spectra um, is a little bit tricky. All right, first off, you should notice immediately you don't see two peaks of the same size like you did over here, okay? So what that tells you is that they have emitted the very first energy, the 1s energy. Okay, so the 1s2, it's somewhere over here in oblivion. We can't see it. So the graph actually starts with 2s2. You know this because there's only one small peak to begin with. Okay, so if there are two small peaks, it starts at the 1s. If there are only one, it starts, starts at the 2s. Okay, now after the 2s comes the 2p. So here we have our 2p6. Then we go to the 3s2. Then 3p6. All right, now usually after 3p6 comes what? 4s, right? hold on, this does not look like a 4s2. What could that be? If you guess 3D, you were right. Okay, so when we're talking about removing electrons from an atom, we're going to remove them a little differently than we put them in. When we put them in, um, after the 3p6 comes the 4s2, and then the 3d10, right? Well, they don't come off in that order, okay? 
They have to come from the outside ring first. So they're going to come off this 4S ring first. So the 4S energy is going to be lower than the 3D, okay? Because the 3D is closer to the nucleus. So this is the 3D, which means this is the 4S, and this is the 4P. Now, is it a full 4P? Well, if you look at the sizes of the peaks, they're the same size. So that tells us that this has to be a 4P6. Okay. All right, that concludes all our information about uh, PS. So just remember, the size of the peaks tells you how many electrons. Uh, they don't necessarily go in order. When you get here, you have to go by ring order instead of by energy level order, which is how they fill. So the 4S and the 3D switch places. And then if you don't see two small peaks at the beginning, that tells you they have omitted the 1S because it's so very, very large that it can't even be included on the graph.